A major change in the weather pattern says cold air advection surges southward from Canada. Let's take a look at those climate statistics. The North Atlantic Oscillation is in the negative territory, indicating weak flow out there in the Atlantic that can be associated with blocking. And the PNA is way up into the positive range, and that's definitely something that we see during cold air outbreaks into the central and eastern U.S. There's the surface map for this afternoon showing the flood of cold air coming out of Canada. That's all fresh Canadian polar air. Looks like the bulk of it is in the Dakotas. Out ahead of it, you would think that this would be warm tropical air, but this is actually a transition air mass. If you take a look at those values in Texas, Louisiana, Alabama, you can see that they're not terribly warm. Dew points in the 50s indicating a northerly source. And down in the south, yeah, there is a frontal boundary with cool conditions in Mexico. And if we take a look in the southwestern U.S., northerly flow. Las Vegas winds out of the north. Northeast winds at Phoenix. So this is some highly modified polar air coming south. And most of this is going to be of Pacific origin. So because of that, we're not going to find the dry line in Texas. This is all anticyclonic flow, not the typical cyclonic lee side troughing that we see in dry line situations. In the northeastern U.S., they are firmly in warm air advection. Those are all warm air advection showers across Quebec, Ontario, and the northeastern U.S. That warm weather flowing north. Caribou, Maine, they had a low last night of 57. Very unusual for them. Lows should be around 40 degrees right now. They've had showers through Ontario. Toronto got 0.72 inches yesterday. And the Weather Prediction Center calling for a marginal risk of excessive rainfall in parts of New York and down into New York City, where they had some major flooding last week. And we've got the remains of Tropical Storm Philippe out there. That's going to take a track towards Maine and sling moisture into the northeastern U.S. That onshore component tends to be very wet, and any tropical moisture or precipitable water bound up with that tropical storm remnants will get precipitated out as showers and rain. In the southeastern U.S., we have the remains of that frontal boundary. I think that's through Georgia. I can't really pin that down exactly, but it is associated with a few showers there. We do have a red flag warning from southern Alabama into southern Louisiana. That's due to the approach of that front from the north. It's going to kick up those winds up to 25 miles an hour, and with low relative humidities, that's going to be an excellent situation for wildfires to develop. In the southern plains, it is drying out. They had some torrential rains in Brownsville yesterday. If we go back to yesterday morning, there's that MCS moving through east and central Texas. And that surges southward during the day. Brownsville located right there. You can see those storms pick up and kind of sit over the city and more remnants affecting them well into the evening. These are some pictures taken out there yesterday and storm sewers were overwhelmed. How would you like to have this guy's job? In the northern plains, that cold air is flowing south associated with this 1034 millibar high. The growing season in the northern wheat belt has come to an end. A massive area of freeze warnings extending from the Dakotas all the way south into northeastern Colorado, northwestern Kansas, and on up towards Sioux Falls. And around that, we do have a frost advisory from Fargo down to Omaha, Kansas City, Wichita, Dodge City, and even out to Denver. Temperatures are going to fall close to freezing within that red area. And then we move out towards the southwestern U.S., even though we do have northerly flow, it is rather weak, and the air mass heavily modified with ridging aloft. And as a result, we're getting some very warm temperatures. Let's take a look at that surface map. So right now, we've got 100 at Phoenix, 99 at Tucson, and moving out to Los Angeles, 70s and 80s along the coast, 87 at Santa Barbara. The San Joaquin Valley, rather warm, upper 80s and lower 90s, but along the coast, 
93 on up into the Bay Area, 91 right now at San Jose, and San Francisco International Airport reporting 79 degrees. And we are getting into Santa Ana season whenever we have a strong pressure gradient from northern Nevada to Los Angeles, like that, where we have high pressure here and low pressure down to the south. That is a optimal setup for Santa Ana winds. And with that, warm conditions along the coast, wildfires, gusty winds, and that's a pattern that's very common during the fall and early winter. In the northwestern U.S., underneath the influence of this ridge from British Columbia to Montana, so a northerly component to the wind flow, enough cold air invading Wyoming, where they have a freeze watch for tonight with temperatures coming down to 28. In southeastern Alaska, they are seeing an atmospheric river moving into that region. IVT values running about 300 to 500, which is light to moderate, but we will continue to see a push of that moisture into that region going into tomorrow. And that includes the area around Yakutat. Enough of that moisture coming around the other side of the mountains to help generate some overrunning, isentropic lift, and quite a bit of snow from Yellowknife to Old Crow and Fairbanks. And up there in Fairbanks, they do have a winter weather advisory for today, looking for one to three inches of snow. This is a photo taken earlier today from the weather service at Fairbanks, showing about three inches on the ground. And they do have gale warnings in the Bering Sea, just south of Nome. Very stormy weather, but fortunately in the southern part of the state, it is mostly rain, and that's due in part to that onshore component coming in from the south. In Canada, not much to report, really. Cold, some ridging across the western Arctic. Temperatures, though, I guess I'm not going to call that frigid, but we're looking at 20s and 30s up there. That cold air flowing south, and there's that thermal trough right there indicated by the blue dashed lines. Some of that thermal troughing brought record cold to Saskatchewan. North Battleford was down to minus 10 Celsius, or 14 Fahrenheit. Temperatures in Saskatoon down into the teens. And unfortunately, I'm not really able to track world weather, but there is a heat wave going on in Saudi Arabia and the Persian Gulf area. It was 116 at Iran yesterday and 113 in Oman. Overnight lows in the United Arab Emirates as high as 93. And this feed right here, Tiri Goose, BC, that's going to be a good place to look for additional details. Looking at the tropics, not very much going on. The remains of Philippe moving north-northeast, expected to head up into Maine. And we've got another possibility of a wave off of West Africa. And we take a look at the surface chart out there in the tropics, the vorticity, streamlines, and so on. And we see that one little weather system coming together right there off of Senegal, drifting south of the Cape Verde Islands, but that moves northwest, and that's not expected to affect the U.S. In fact, you can see some strong offshore flow, dumping cold air and dry air out there into the Gulf Stream and Gulf of Mexico region. And by mid-October, nothing going on at all. But we'll keep checking back in on that because things, of course, can change. So let's take a look at the forecast. This is where we're at right now. We go into the overnight hours and into tomorrow morning. This is what it looks like at dawn. A big 1030 millibar high across Kansas. Cold conditions from the Dakotas down to Kansas. And rather cool all the way down to Texas, Illinois, and Arkansas. Cold air advection as well out there in the Great Lakes region. Some cyclogenesis in the eastern Great Lakes, keeping things kind of stormy. You can see that wraparound with a pretty well-defined cold conveyor belt coming into the back of that system. Meanwhile, a big warm-up out west. Tomorrow will be quite warm in California and Arizona, looking for 90s in the San Joaquin Valley, 100 again at Phoenix, and up to 84 at Portland, and 79 at Seattle. Then going into Sunday, there's the map for midday on Sunday. Looks pretty good across the country. Inclement weather there around North Bay, Ontario, up into Quebec, 
as we get the remnants of these old occlusions getting stuck up there in eastern Canada. So the cold air will be spreading into the Appalachians. You can see the thermal troughing right there. So we'll be seeing highs of around 52 at Pittsburgh and 56 at Charleston and looking at 60s and 70s down in the southeastern U.S. Out west, a little bit of cooling, but still quite warm, and some of the heat starts spreading into Montana and Wyoming. We're looking for a high in Denver of 77 and 77 at Billings. This is going to be the map when we come back for the supporter video on Monday. A core of cold air still hung up there in the Great Lakes, keeping things cold with highs in the 50s. Southwest winds and downslope into Texas and Oklahoma. You can see a little bit of a frontal boundary right there. But not enough moisture to support any storms. We're going to be looking for a high of 86 at DFW and 83 at Amarillo. And out west, 80 degrees at Billings, continued warm. But it will be cooling down out there. You can see another Pacific system moving inland and... That's going to be another atmospheric river moving into Seattle and Portland. So highs down into the lower 60s in that part of the country. So here's a look at that moisture coming in from the Pacific. You can look at the valid time at the bottom right and see when it's valid for. So this is going to be late Friday into Saturday. That one atmospheric river coming up into Alaska right there, but more on tap in the Central Pacific. That next batch will be coming in for early Monday into the Pacific Northwest and into Northern California, hitting San Francisco around midday on Monday and more upstream. Here comes another surge for later in the week. This is going to be about Friday or Saturday. Looks like it's getting blocked maybe by some ridging out west, but it is right there offshore and looks like that spreads in for Saturday and more moisture. And we've also got Invest 98W, which will be a major typhoon near Japan. That could put a lot of moisture into the Pacific for the middle of the month. So that's as far as we can go. Another AR heading into Northern California for the end of the period, about 9 or 10 days from now. Let's take a rough look at those temperatures. This is how it looks this weekend. There's that cold air flowing down. Some moderation around the middle of the week. Lots of warm air in the southwestern U.S. for midweek, but at the end of next week, some more cold air coming down out of eastern Canada. You can see that flowing into the central U.S. for next weekend, and that could affect Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, with conditions pretty similar to what we have this weekend. And let's take a look at the 300 millibar chart. Yeah, we've definitely got a split flow pattern, the main polar front jet well up to the north, and a southerly stream down along the Gulf Coast. And that's probably associated with that previous outbreak of cold air, the jet just kind of settling in over the remnants of that gradient. Going into the weekend and early next week, continued split flow with a cutoff low in Quebec that's detached from the southern branch up to the north, and some very strong jet stream winds coming in, 160 knots, well west of Oregon. And that's a, yeah, the, the barn door is open for sure into the northwestern U.S. Classic El Nino pattern. Classic El Nino pattern down south as well with an active jet in the Gulf Coast region. So things pretty much right on track. And you can see some Omega blocking up there in the northern U.S. So not really much change to the pattern. In fact, it looks like things amplify getting into the later half of next week. And when things get all amplified like this, we see a lot more interesting weather. So stay tuned and we'll see what's coming up for next week. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Hopefully you found something useful or informative in this program. Thank you very much to Jonathan Morgan for the renewal. And thanks to our many supporters, people like Ginger, Brian Nelson, Oat Maelstrom, James Taylor, Caleb Weaver, Robert Wheat. Thank you very much for your support. All right, hopefully you all have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here Monday for the supporters. 
and on Wednesday for everybody else. Take care. Bye-bye.